Okay, we have on the board the series definition for cotangent of x is going to be equal to the sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity of 1 over x plus n pi. Okay, this is really interesting and it's kind of a follow-up on my previous video in this playlist where I derived the digamma reflection formula. And I think that's going to be our starting point, so let's just look at that formula to start. Okay, so we have our reflection formula up top. I derived this one previously from Euler's reflection formula. Now, we also have our definition over here, our series definition for the digamma function. And I think right away what I'm going to do is let, let's turn each of these expressions into the series definition. So first, this one is exactly this. So we can just plug that in. This one, we just need to plug in 1 minus c here. So let's see how all that looks. So just focusing on the left side, we've expanded each of these out into the series representation. This thing right here, if you're wondering, is the euler mascheroni constant, somewhere around 0.577. But you notice when we distribute in this minus sign here, this is going to become a plus. So these constants are going to go away. So we don't have to worry about that. And another thing with the minus sign, if we break this up into four sums, what's going to happen? We have one over n plus one here and here. So these are effectively going to cancel out. We'll just switch the sign on this. So what we're going to have is we'll have this first one from n equals zero to infinity of one over n plus c. And then over here, we still have the minus sign, and this is going to be 1 over n plus 1 minus c. And at this point, let me bring the right-hand side of the equation back into it. So we just have our pi cotangent pi z. And then now what I want to do with the goal in mind, we're trying to get this back to an expression for cotangent of x. And we get this pi z in here. So I don't really want to pi as the input on cotangent here. So let's just do a variable change here, a substitution, actually. So this is going to be, let's set x equal to pi z. And in order to do that over here, let's solve for z. So we have z equals x over pi. And I think try to save a move, let's actually divide off pi on both sides. Because I'm trying to isolate the cotangent, so we'll divide pi off here, cancel that here, then do this substitution, and let's kind of flip it around. So now we have our cotangent, on at, cotangent of x on the left side like this. Then we'll have one over pi, then let's substitute in for z. We're going to have 1 over n plus x over pi. And then on this other one, this thing's going to become 1 over n plus 1 minus x over pi. But then let's distribute, let's take the pi and kind of distribute it in here and rewrite it that way. So this first one, multiply in, I'll kind of reorder it. So like the pi is going to cancel here and we get an x. And then we get n pi. That's promising because that's what we have right here. Then on this one, um, let's kind of just leave it. So it's going to become, let's leave n plus 1 times pi. And then this is just going to be minus x. And then from here, I'm just going to break this thing up into two sums and try to clean it up on the next board. Okay, we're making good progress towards having something like this for our sums. But we don't really want two sums. We want just one. The first thing I want to do, I mean, I'd like to smash them together, but what's going to happen, let's use this minus sign and use it to reverse the sign right here and flip it to get it to look more like this one. Well, to make these match, I don't really want n plus 1 here. I want just n, so that's easy. We can do an index change. Do minus 1 here. I just need to add 1 on here. So that way, the lower index here is going to become 1, and then this thing over here is just going to become n pi. And then we're getting close, but again, I want a plus sign here in order to get these to work together. What I'm going to do is a variable change on it. This part's a little weird, so let's do n equals minus k. Or you could, or of course, you could think about it like k minus n. So if we do that, this right here is going to become minus k. And we can make this a k, but we've reversed the sign on everything. So now what happened is this became minus 1, this became infinity. But in our sum, we don't really want to be counting down to minus infinity. We want to be counting up. So let's just reverse it. And that's not going to change anything. So we're going from minus infinity to minus 1. And then over here, minus times minus is plus. And so we can rewrite this thing as just plus k pi. And so now that we've got this the way we want, let's get rid of this junk. And then we'll do another variable change. Because we can do, it's just a dummy variable. I can change this back to whatever I want. So I'm going to change this back to an n. Not confusing it with the n that we have defined before. We're just creating an n to match with this one. But now doing that, we can put these together. We've got the same thing inside here. And now our bounds, 
And now there's no break in the bounds. We're going from minus infinity to infinity. So I can put this together. And for our formula, we have cotangent of x equals the sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity of just 1 over x plus n pi. And that's it. And so it's a pretty interesting formula. I was messing with it in a spreadsheet. And you do get, you know, you plug in, you know, pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 4, and you get all the values you should. Although it converges very slowly, like in the spreadsheet, I had to do like a thousand lines to get even a decent approximation with it. One interesting thing you can check. Now we know cotangent of x is the same thing as cosine of x over sine x. So that tells us there's a problem here because let's say x is some multiple of like... Not, we are already using n, so let's say x is some multiple of pi. Well, in that case, if this is true, then sine's gonna be zero, and we're dividing by zero at any, because at any integer multiple of pi, sine's zero. And so we know that's gonna be a problem in this formula. Well, what you see if you plug in, if you plug in m pi for x, where the problem is is when n is equal to minus m, then you're dividing by zero here, and this thing blows up, but otherwise, you put it into a spreadsheet and you get something approximately close to the value you should get for cotangent x. Also, let me know if you have other ways to derive this. I didn't look into any other ways because I just finished up that other video from the um, reflection formula to go from here, so I didn't look at anything else. So I'd be curious if there's other ways. I think I did a quick search on YouTube and I didn't see anything, so, but yeah, I'd like to learn. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.